Right, that's the second implant completed. Um, this morning's procedure, very, very quick indeed. Literally go in, strip off, lie down, in it goes, in and out in probably less than 30 seconds. Um, and then lie flat for a little while, I'm inverted a little bit, um, and then done. So I'm, I'm in and out within probably about 20 minutes. All very, very easy. Um, abdominal wise, it's all a bit messed up, but I suspect that's because I had bowel prep only two days ago. Then I had irrigation yesterday and I've had lots of things shoved up there. So things are all a bit messy. But other than that, feeling pretty good. Procedure itself, very, very straightforward. Um, so yeah, all good so far, no negative effects. Lots of gas yesterday, I did notice that. But again, hard to tell because everything's just a little bit um, interfered with, I think would be a good description. Right, now to some questions. I've been asked about the cost. This, a number of people messaged me and thank you to everyone who has messaged and some of the logistics. Now what's interesting is just how many people are contacting me to say, do you know what, I've been thinking about doing this and um, didn't really have the, the guts to do it, pardon the pun, um, and that I'm, since I'm putting it out there, um, it's making it a little bit more accessible and potentially acceptable. So just to recap, it's not actually a poo transplant. It used to be. Now it's the, it's a culture transplant, for want of a better description. Now, the cost. You're looking at around about four to five thousand pounds for the procedure. And then you're going to have to look at accommodation and all the rest that goes with the trappings of travel that would go with that. Now, why am I here and didn't get this done in the UK? It's a good question. Um, be aware there's lots of people online on varying forums who have a unusual interest, shall we say, in this kind of thing and are self-appointed experts on all sorts. Just be aware that they're complete strangers on the internet with a strange and overtly obsessive interest in poo transplants. Just be aware of that. I'm not gonna name any of the groups or any of the forums where these people reside, but I just wanted to point that out to people. Not everyone has a healthy interest. I think that's a reasonable thing to say. Right, four to five thousand pounds. Why am I here rather than the UK? It's simple. In the UK, as in much of parts of the world, um, faecal microbiota transplant is only licensed for treatment of Clostridium difficile, or C. diff, as it's commonly known. Now, C. diff is a fairly common bowel infection that is notoriously difficult to shift. The reason being is that antibiotics work very well for this sort of bacteria as long as the bacteria is in somewhere that has a blood supply. But when it's on the inside of your colon, blood supply doesn't get to the stuff that's in the colon, so some things can be very hard to get rid of. What has been known now for a long time is that faecal biota transplant from healthy people into people with chronic C. diff infections is incredibly effective. So in the UK, um, license, there's only a number of, small number of hospitals that do this. They're only allowed to do it for C. diff infections. Now there's other places around that will be doing this for treatment of autism. There is evidence for this as well, that Asperger's and autism, some people benefit enormously from this kind of thing. But unless it's part of a clinical trial in the UK, no one else is doing it. So registered, as in real healthcare professionals, licensed healthcare professionals like doctors, nurses, those kind of people, they're not allowed to do this treatment for the kind of symptoms that I have, because I haven't got C. difficile and I'm not part of an aut autistic research project. So simply there's nowhere licensable that they're allowed to do it. So the only places that do do this, and I only found one or two I think in the UK, are basically life coaches with poo. They're not necessarily going to be qualified professionals because qualified professionals can't do this. So you're now shifting it to the alternative complementary therapy type people. Your chiropractors, I say, your life coaches with poop. That's why I kind of got put off a little bit. Now, one of the websites I looked at, which was the most, the most immediately in terms of available in terms of geography, 
I saw a few things on the advertising that concerned me, mostly because it is exactly the same thing that I criticized the life coaching and private therapy world for, the overinflation of the illusion of qualification. That's all I needed to see. Not go in there, I'm done. They may well be perfectly reputable and perfectly professional and know exactly what they're doing. But when I see any organization or individual exaggerating claims of qualification, I don't need to know any more. At least if you're going to be unqualified about what you do, admit it, be open about it. Let, let the customer choose. Don't try and fool me, the customer. There's too much that goes on in sort of alternative healthcare. So this particular clinic, and I can't tell you which one it is. Really sorry about that. I will be able to, but in two weeks time. There's all sorts of confidentiality clauses here and also the, the nature of the place that I'm at. Um, they, have to be, they have to maintain very high levels of confidentiality because all sorts of people coming here. For a lot of see, I don't care. Hey, I have a boot transplant, don't care. For a lot of people though, it's a very, very sensitive issue and from their background and within their social cultural group, it's going to be a very sensitive issue. So we've got to respect that. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to see if I can get them permission to actually then give all the details about this. And I want to try and go around with my camera when they're empty to see if I can give you a quick tour of the clinic to show you what's what inside there. So that's why I've come here. So the actual cost of this was around about 4,000 euros. Um, and then I had to put on top the ridiculous COVID testing, PCR test, whatever, which I've got to pay for again next week to go back home again. Um, then we've got accommodation, food and flights. Um, just be aware that <laughs> the cheap flights aren't always that cheap. By the time you've actually then checked in and booked your luggage, the flight itself, £30. Luggage fee, £100 each way. Yeah, right. So just be aware of those kind of things. But it's about 4000 Now, effectiveness. This is one of the areas that is the issue. Because that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. And does it actually work? Now, these guys here have been absolutely superb before I came over and when I was shopping around to look at the different clinics about the data. Not everywhere was. I've just got to be aware of that. Now, i got to be honest, I already know the data. I've read the original research papers. I've, for the last year or two, it's been a, a major point of investigation for me. Now, this is rough figures, just rough figures. Around about 60%, so you've got more than half percent, half probability um, 60% of people get a positive result. About 40% of people that come over won't get a positive result. Of those 60%, well, so that's pretty good odds, but of those 60%, they're then going to be on a range from what these guys here call a super responder. They get immediate relief within days whilst they're still having treatment, and they stay immediately relieved, all the way through to, yeah, it's a bit better more people are into the more positive end. So essentially, you've got a 60% chance of improvement, and then that improvement is on a scale. Um, there's no guarantees with anything, um, and that's the important detail. I'm still open-minded as to what long-term results I'll get, if any. For me, it was a point of desperation, so I figured it's worth a try. Um, shop around in terms of clinics, and do check who they are. Here are red flags for me. These are absolute red flags. When you've got someone calling themselves Dr. Such and Such, and they've got the letters DC after their name, they're not a doctor, they're a chiropractor. That's really important. Chiropractors are allowed to call themselves doctors. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's, it's legal. But to me, this is the illusion of qualification. I don't like that. A chiropractor is cracking bones, and yet they're experts on absolutely fucking everything. They're like NLPers. I've seen too many people quoting the famous doctor in this and that who's a virology expert, an immunology expert, a neurology expert. And then when I look up who they actually are, they're not a medical doctor, they're always a chiropractor. And so there's so much quackery that goes on with the DCs. That puts me off instantly. When somebody is a nutritional medicine or an, an, a medical nutritional internist, basically some made up bullshit total made up illusion of medical qualification. And when somebody's referring to themselves as a doctor and we can't trace what they're a doctor of or if they've got a mail order PhD or anything else, these are things to be aware of. If you're taking advice on any of the forums as you're shopping around, 
Be aware of the Nuts Brigade. They, <laughs> yeah, they found me since I've started uploading these videos, and my god, the... I suspect, I hate to say, I'm probably get hell for this, I suspect some of them are on this spectrum, and some of them are slightly narcissistic, and on the spectrum. Just be aware of that, you may want to set up a fake account, um, or an anonymous throwaway account, in order to join these forums and start asking questions. Right, that's all for now. If you do have any questions about anything to do with any of this stuff, do stick them in the comment section. Do please help, help me by clicking the like button. At some point, I'm going to compile all of this stuff and specific logistical data on a web page, which will go up onto the main website, 23NL People. That won't go live until after a week after I get home. Again, for various confidentiality clauses I've got signed here. Right, that's all for now. Another update tomorrow.